Welcome to ETM 260 Computer Aided Design. This is Lecture 8, Assembly Tools, Part 1. This video is supplemented by the given PowerPoint. This lecture will introduce you to the basic techniques of how to create an assembly on an X. In order to start an assembly in an X, it is necessary to have a new file. Go to the new icon, select the assembly environment, and make sure to select the proper units that you will be using. Once you have done this, press OK. The assembly environment will open and a new window will show. This will be used to add the assembly components. We'll be using a bottom-up assembly approach, which means that assembly is done only after all the components have been created. I will show you the NX tools available to create an assembly by doing an example. We will create a vise. Let's go to the open icon and open vise body. As you can see from the window, this is the main component of the vise. You click OK and a new window will show. This window will indicate the part that you're going to be adding and the orientation that it has. Since it's the first part, it is recommended to always position it in the absolute origin. That means that the origin of the part is exactly the same as the origin of the assembly file. At this moment, we're going to click OK. Since this body will not be moving, we need to fix it. It is always recommended to have at least one of the components in your assembly to be fixed. Let's see how to add the constraint. You go to the assembly constraints icon and you have a variety of choices. We're going to select fix and you're going to select the object. Once you're happy with the selection, click OK. Fix indicates that this object cannot be translated or rotated. I will be showing you the assembly constraints while we add new parts to the assembly. Let's just start with the vice job. To add a new component, simply go to the Add Component icon. We're going to browse and select Vice Jaw. Once again, it shows you a preview of the file. It shows it to you. Now, since we do not want this part to be in top of the body, we are not going to select Absolute Origin, but we are going to just have it as Select Origin. What it means is that we're going to be able to click and decide where we want the part to be located. We're going to just simply say OK. And then we're going to select a location somewhere over here. We're going to constrain the jaw about the body. Let's go to Assembly Constraints. And we're going to select Touch and Align. Notice that Touch and Align has three different choices. Touch, Align and infer axis. Let's just start with touch. The touch constraint allows you to have two surfaces, two lines attaching, touching each other. However, the surface will one go, go pointing in one direction and the other one in the other direction. For example, let's have this upper surface touching this bottom surface. Notice that when we did this, now this jaw is constrained in the z-axis, therefore it cannot move up or down, but it is not constrained either in the y or in the x-axis. Now we're going to have, once again, touch a line. We're going to select touch, and we're going to select this surface, and we're going to have it touch this surface going back to the isometric view and we're going to see what is happening. Notice that this jaw once again is constrained so that it doesn't move 
in the y direction or in the z direction but we could move it on the x-axis and let's show you how that is done we could move the component by selecting the move component icon we're going to select the component and notice that if we click on the specify orientation if we look, select the x-axis the jaw is going to be able to go back and forth in the x-axis however it will not be able to go in the y-axis or in the z-axis because we already constrained it it will also not be able to rotate at this moment we would like to have the jaw at a specific distance from this surface of the body. So we're going to go to assembly constraints, we're going to select distance, and then we're going to select this surface, and either you could select this edge or you could select the actual surface. And then you provide a distance. So let's make it void and hit OK. We're now going to add and constrain the jaw screw. We're going to go to add, open, and jaw screw. Once again, we're going to have the positioning to set the origin, and we're going to click OK. We're going to select the origin somewhere up here. We're going to do Ctrl F so we could see all the components. We want to be able to align this screw to go into these two holes. The way that we're going to do it is by aligning the center lines of the holes and the center lines of the screw. Go to assembly constraints, click on touch and align, and for the orientation select infer axis, center axis. Select the center axis of one of the holes and the center axis of the screw. Click OK. Press Ctrl F so that you could see it better. Notice now that this screw is aligned on the hole and we're going to move it a bit so that we could see and relocate it a little bit better. Now we would like to have the surface of the screw aligned with the surface of the jaw. There are two different ways that you could do it. You could either touch both of the two surfaces or you could make the two circles concentric to each other. The advantage of using concentric is that it will allow you to center the axis and flush the two surfaces at the same time. So let's try that. Go to assembly, concentric, use this circle, and this circle over here. Hit OK. Please note that when you use concentric, it will make the surfaces flush. If you need a distance between the surface and the other surface, you need to use a line axis and then have a certain distance provided between them. We're now going to add and constrain the screw bar. Add, open, screw bar. We're going to select the origin, so we're going to click OK. Select it, and we're going to do Ctrl F so we could see it. The way that we want to constrain it is one to make sure that the central line of the screw is exactly the central line of this hole. And then we want to make sure that this bar is right on the middle of the hole. Let's just start by aligning the central lines. Touch and align, central lines, here and here. Control F so that we could see it. Notice that the bar is aligned now with the hole. 
we would like now to have the position of this bar to be symmetric inside of the hole. In order to do that, we're going to use the center assembly. Go to the assembly constraints, go into center. Center has three different choices, one to two, two to one, and two to two. The idea is that it's going to find the center of a particular geometry and it's going to align the centers. For example, if you select one to two, it takes that surface that you selected, the one, and it will take the two, will find the middle point between those two, and it will align the middle point of the second choices with the first one. If you do two to one, it will find the middle point between the two initial surfaces, and it will align it with the second choice. If you select two to two, you will have the first two choices, it will find out the middle, and then the second two choices will find out the second middle, and it will align those two centers. In this case, we will have one center line and two surfaces. So we could do it either one to two or two to one. So let's try it one to two. The one is going to be the center line, and the twos are going to be the surfaces that we have over here. So we're going to select the surface, we're going to select this surface, and we're going to select the other surface on the other side. Now notice that this bar is right symmetrical about the center line. We're now going to add and constrain the bar globes. Go to add, open, bar globes. Since we need two of them, we're going to select two. And since we are selecting the origin, make sure that you have a scatter. If you do not have this choice selected, then as many quantities as you have are going to be positioned one in top of the other one. Once you have clicked this, press OK, select the origin, and now you have the two components. These globes are going to be located at the end of the screw bar. So we're going to go to assembly constraint and we're actually going to use concentric. We're going to have this flat surface to be concentric to this center over here. Notice that the, the globe is actually in the other side of the bar. Since we want to make sure that it goes into the bar, we could simply revert the constraint. This has to be done right after you set up the constraint. If you don't do it, unfortunately, you will have to do the constraint all over again. Let's try for the next one. I'm going to do assembly constraint. Once I get concentric, and in this case, it's actually going into the bar. We're now going to add and constraint the base plate. Let's go to add, open, base plate. Select the origin and click OK. Notice that this plate has countersunk holes. This means that a screw is going to go into here, therefore we need them to be facing outwards into our assembly. They are going to be located at the bottom of the base. So we need to make sure that the bottom surface of this plate is aligned with the bottom surface of the body. We're going to do this in the following way. Assembly constraints. We're going to go touch align, touch. And we're going to do this bottom one with this bottom one. Okay. Now we need to make sure that the is that the holes are properly aligned. We're going to align the surfaces. Notice that we're doing a line because we want the direction of this face to be the same direction of this face. Okay. 
And now to double check that the orientation of the faces is correct, we're going to go into a front view and we're going to go into a wireframe. Notice that the locations of the holes that we have here is exactly the same locations of the holes of the plate. If we had selected the opposite face on the front, it would have given us a wrong location and the holes would not align for the body and the plate. Let's go back to the isometric. Now let's go back to the solid so that we could go finish with the alignment. So once again, align between this surface and the surface over here. And we use align because the direction of both surfaces is going to be facing in the same direction. Once again, if the surfaces are facing the opposite direction, you will use touch. We're now going to add and constrain the clamping plate. Let's go to add, open, clamping plate. Okay, you okay? This clamping plate is located at the bottom part of the jaw. If you notice once again, this plate has countersunk holes in one side and flat on the other. Therefore, we're going to have a screws going into this plate. The first thing that we're going to do is going to have the surfaces touch the bottom surface of the plate with the bottom surface of the jaw. I rotate it. I'm going to relocate it a bit. Oops. Okay. Now we could see the jaw. We're going to assembly, touch and align. We're going to select touch. I have bottom surface of the plate with the bottom surface of the jaw. We're now going to make this surface parallel to this surface to provide an orientation. We're going to select parallel and you're going to select the surface of the vice jaw with this surface over here. And the last thing that we are going to do is we're going to make one of the holes concentric to the other. So we're going to go to assembly constraints, concentric. You're going to make one concentric. And we're going to select. Make sure that you select the hole in the surface since concentric is going to make it flush. Okay, let's double check that everything is correct. And you can see that the holes are completely clear, so we're good. We're now going to add and constrain the screws. I'm going to show you how to do one, and then you will do the rest. Let's go to add. We're going to let's start with screw number one. We're going to only enter one. However, notice that you're going to need four for the whole assembly. Just going to select one. This screw is located at the bottom part between the bottom plate and the body. The way that we're going to do the constraint is the following. We're going to align the center lines of the screws and the hole, and then we're going to make the surfaces align to each other. So we're going to do touch align, align the center lines. So we take the center line, align with the center line. Notice that the screw went inside of the uh, object, which makes it a little bit more difficult to select. One way to avoid this is to make sure that the motion is not dynamic. What I mean is the following. We're going to go to the constraint navigator and we're going to, we see that we have this touch align and we're going to delete it. So we could freely move this so that I could show you how to make the constraint and avoid the dynamic behavior of it. So we're going to go back over here 
and we're going to go to constraints again we're gonna do touch a line so what we're going to do is select the center line we're going to select it but before we do that we're gonna open this menu and we're gonna avoid the dynamic positioning so this creates the constraint but it does not move the object immediately it allows you then to do the additional constraints once you're done with all the constraints then you hit OK. So once again, we're going to do this and select the other center line. Notice that it shows you the constraint is done. However, it doesn't move it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to align the surfaces. We're going to align the bottom surface of the plate with the upper surface of the screw. Remember, we use align when both of the surfaces are pointing in the same direction. Now both of the constraints are done and then we're gonna hit OK. I'm gonna go back to see how it looks and that is exactly how we want it to do it. If you want to position or orient the screw in a particular way you could either make the surface this surface parallel to the direction of the uh, of the hole of the screw in order to provide a particular direction. So please make sure that you are able to add the other plate and the remaining screws. There are three screws number one remaining in the bottom and two screws number two in the top, in the plate. And then make sure that you add the last screw in the top of the assembly. Once you are done with the assembly, make sure that you save the file. One very important thing is that when you save the file, this file has to be saved exactly in the same folder where all the components are provided. If it's saved in another folder, then the assembly will not be able to be regenerated. Let's call it lecture 8 assembly. Once again, make sure that it's saved in the same folder where all the parts are saved already. Let's talk about, about the Constraint Navigator. The Constraint Navigator is uh, located in the resource bar. If you see it over here, all the different constraints that we created in this assembly are shown over here. It will show you what is the name of the constraint and what are the different bodies that are involved in that particular constraint. If there was an issue with the constraint, meaning that it was conflicted with something else, it will show you in red. So make sure that you do not have any red constraints in your assembly. Another very important thing that you could see is the different parts that you have over here. If for any reason you want to work in a particular, a particular part of your assembly, you could go to the assembly navigator select the part and double click on it. Notice that that particular part will be dark and the other ones will simply look like a ghost. At this moment you could find information about that particular part, things like sketches, so on and so forth. If you're done working on that part and you want to go back and work on the whole assembly, simply double click on the assembly name and it will bring you back to the assembly. In many cases, the user wants to understand the behavior and the motion of the assembly. In order to do that, we use the Move Component tool. Go to Move Component, and let's select the component. For example, we want to make sure that this bar is rotating about this axis. So we're going to take the bar, we're going to select a rotation and then notice that we rotate it. And as we rotate the bar, notice how the screw is rotating also. And the reason is because the bar is constrained about the hole in the screw. However, if we try to move the bar side to side, notice that we cannot do it because the way that we constrain it is symmetric about the center line. 
We want to see whether the jaw moves, and if the jaw moves, the screw and everything attached to it will move too. However, at this moment, we have a constraint that provides a distance between the two surfaces. We would like to remove this constraint. We go to the constraint navigator, we're going to distance, and we're not going to delete the uh, constraint. If you wanted to delete it, simply click on it and click delete. But since what we want to do it is just deactivate it, simply unclick it. Notice that now what we want to do is move the component. In theory, if we only selected the jaw and have a motion of it, everything that is attached to that jaw should move. Notice that that's exactly the case. Notice that as we do the motion, the jaw is intersecting the body in two different locations and the screw is also going through it. However, a collision is not being shown. If we want to see collisions, we could go into move component, go into setting, and under collision detection, instead of having none, enter highlight collision. What this will allow you to do is as you do the motion, notice that it will indicate that the body are red. So that means that there is going to be some type of intersection between the bodies. And notice that as you move through, you're going to see the collision taking place. In many cases, the assembly has too many components and too many constraints. It will be necessary to hide them just to make the assembly a little bit nicer. To do that, go to the show and hide icon and select assembly constraints, hit the minus so that they will be temporarily hit. Please make sure to add the remaining components to this assembly and save it on the proper folder. Remember that the assembly has to be saved in the same folder where all the components are saved. This is the end of lecture eight, assembly tools part one. Make sure to complete all the required quizzes, review the material given in the PowerPoint and chapter nine from your textbook, and be ready to start class assignments.